very similar to what we had in inventory. Remember, there were two systems, perpetual versus periodic. And then we also had various ways to allocate cost of goods sold. We have two different ways to record receivables, allowance and then the direct write-off. And then under the allowance method only, we have two different ways to estimate that amount. That's why, remember, in the prior presentation, I put an X in there. This X can be calculated in two different ways. Let's take a look at the first one, called percentage of receivable, percentage of sales. I'm sorry. Under this method, I can estimate that my net credit sales, why do we have three words in here? It's not simply regular sales, net meaning without returns and allowances, because there's nothing to collect for those. Credit, meaning cash sales will be excluded. They've been already collected. So in my example, I have net credit sales of 800000 and I estimated that my bad debt expense is 1% of those sales. This estimate is based on the historical data, what's going on in the industry, what's going on in the economy. So I assume I need to take out this 1% of sales because they're bad. That's the journal entry that will get us there. It's the amounts that I'm interested in. If you look at both accounts, bad debt expense and the allowance, which one will show on the same will show up on the same financial statement with sales? Sales think income statement. Allowance is a contra asset, therefore it's on the balance sheet, but my bad debt expense is indeed an income statement account. Therefore, I can say it had a zero to begin with. Now, if I'm thinking that 1% of my sales of $8,000 will be uncollectible, I want this balance in this account, adjusted balance, to be $8,000. How do I go from eight thousand from zero to an eight thousand dollar balance? I need an adjusting journal entry. Here's my AJE for eight thousand dollars to get me there. And if I want to record it in the journal, here's my debit just like I did up here for eight thousand dollars. And by default, debits equal credits, so my allowance would also be credited for the same amount. I would transfer it to the ledger for allow, uh, allowance for doubtful accounts. But to be honest with you, I really don't care what will be the ending balance in that account. Um, it looks like it will be adjusted balance. I put A for adjusted balance, 8500 But again, in this case, um, it's not my leader. My leader is bad debt expense. I was very much concerned um, and making sure that that account will have $8,000 in that to be subtracted from my uh, net credit sales on the income statement, and I have achieved my gold. goal. My next method is called percentage of receivables or aging. An example of aging is given on the illustration 9-8 in your book if you would like to take a look at it. Now, what is special about this method? Um, aging has determined that uh, 3,500 of accounts receivable, um, the amount was 100,000, will be uncollectible. So I'm thinking $3,500 is bad, worth of receivables is bad. How can I take them out? How, how can I adjust that account? The problem is, I don't know who exactly will go out of business and default. So I cannot simply credit accounts receivable. I don't know who. So in this case, I will set up a generic allowance for doubtful account for any accounts receivable. So on the balance sheet, let's pretend this is my balance sheet. Under current assets, I will list my accounts receivable, $100,000, and I would put less allowance. I want my allowance to be $3,500. Okay, For this amount to appear on the balance sheet, it has to come from the trial balance, if you remember going backwards, and it has to come 
from the adjusted balance in the ledger for that account. So I want my adjusted balance to be exactly 3500 on the credit side. Remember, it's a contra asset account. The trick is this account is very busy during the year. What do I mean? If you look back on uh, prior slides, that account was used to write off accounts and then restate it, so it has been pretty busy. And then bear in mind that it is, um, it's not a temporary account, it's a permanent account, so you will have an unadjusted balance to begin with. So in this case, it's a $500 credit balance. How shall I go from a $500 on the credit to $3,500 on the credit side? It looks like I need an adjusted journal entry for $3,000 that will give me exactly balance of $3,500. So going back into the journal, I will need to credit the allowance for $3,000. And by default, bad debt expense will be $3,000 as well. It will be debited on this side. And again, the balance will be $3,000. But to be honest with you, I really don't care. Why? My goal was originally to follow this leader. See, that's why I got it in bold. That's the only account I'm interested in because that will be the account that must be exactly 3500 on the balance sheet. Okay? And uh, again, the main error here that you guys usually make is you forget to check what was on the adjusted balance there to begin with. It can be debit or credit. Um, and you simply go ahead and make the journal entry for $3,500. If you do, that will be too much. You will end up with a $4,000 balance. So you overfilled your allowance account. Both ways, uh, percentage of receivables and sales, are allowed by GAAP. It's just a preference for various companies. Um, you can use either of them. A comparison of the two is also given in your textbook. You can take a, take a look at the illustration 9-6. I went back to the previous slide and look at this. Bad debt expense is only used once during the year. As part of that adjust in journal entry, it kind of sits dormant the whole year until, bang, at the end of the year we make that adjustment. And if you remember, it's a regular expense ex account, so it's temporarily. It has a zero balance to begin with. 